What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of audio in Unity and how to add audio to your game. We're going to add some bubble background sound effects, which you can easily replace with music. And when you feed them, they're going to play a random sound from these three sounds like this. So let's jump right into it. So all we have here is some bubble sound effects and three fish eat sound effects. For variety, we also have a fish prefab, which is where all of these fish derive from. And we have a classic fish tank. So the first thing that I want to do is add bubbles to this boring scene. So we can go ahead and create an object that is just for bubbles and that'll play the bubble sound effects on its own. But we could do a little bit of multitasking. I'll show you in a little bit. First thing that we're going to do is create an empty game object. Go ahead and reset its transform for good practice. And we'll rename this to audio manager because it's going to be managing all of the audio or most of it. And when it comes to audio, the first thing that you need to take note of is your audio listener. Where is it and what is it? Well, it's most commonly found on your main camera. If we click on it, you could see here that it has an audio listener and it's good to have it on the main camera because that's usually the thing that's closest to the player. And if you don't see an audio listener here, you can just go ahead and add a component and look for audio listener and add it. So if you don't have an audio listener, you won't be able to hear audio. And the next thing that you need is an audio source. We're gonna create an audio source right now. We're gonna add it to our audio manager. And this source will play the bubbles sound effects. And I'll give you a quick rundown of the basic settings of an audio source. The audio clip is the clip that the audio source will play. And in our case, this is the bubbles. It will be playing that. We have this mute option. We have play on awake. And what this does is if it is enabled, as soon as you start the game, the audio will start playing. And we want that on for our case. And loop. We want the bubbles to loop instead of just playing this clip one time and is 41 seconds long. So we'll just allow this to loop. And obviously we have the volume and the pitch and spatial blend is an interesting one. So the more you slide it to 3D, it'll factor in more and more 3D effects. And what that does is objects that are further away from your audio listener will be quieter. And the closer they are, the louder they will be. And this will actually factor something in called the Doppler effect. And what that is, is objects that are moving away from you will be pitched down multiplied by their speed or their velocity which means how fast they're going away from you and vice versa for when they're coming towards you so they'll be pitched up and this doppler level is basically what multiplies the doppler effect so if you have this at zero and have this cranked all the way max you won't get any doppler effect since this is 2d we'll set this to nothing and actually that's all we need for the bubble sound effects let's go ahead and hit play you could see that we have some beautiful bubbles but what happens when we try to go to the second tank it just stops playing. What a disaster. Well, good thing we have this audio source on our audio manager because now we'll go ahead and create a C sharp script called audio manager. So the same name and we'll put that script on the audio manager game object and slide it over the audio source and open it up in Visual Studio. So we will not be using system.collections. We won't be using coroutines. We'll use this because this is responsible for lists, which we will use later on. And we won't need update, but we'll transform start into awake and delete this comment. So to fix the problem of not having bubbles in the second scene, we could go ahead and just take our audio manager and prefab it and go to all of the tanks and drag in the audio managers. So they'll have their own bubbles. <laughs> And the last one, there you go. Back to tank one. And now we should have bubbles in all of the scenes, but the bubbles restart every time you switch scenes. Now, how do you fix that? Well, have no fear. We will create a singleton pattern. Now, don't worry. Singleton patterns are pretty simple and you'll probably use them a million times if you're a programmer. So just remembering this will do you a lot of good for yourself. So the basis of a singleton is having an instance of this class that is static. So we'll create a public static audio manager and we call it instance we do this so that we do not need a reference to this class and because it is static we can access it from 
anywhere and there can only be one instance now in awake we check if the instance is equal to null meaning it wasn't set and it doesn't exist then we'll say instance is equal to this audio manager and now that we are the real audio manager we'll just say don't destroy on load and pass in the entire game object so everything on this game object will prevail to the next scene i.e this audio source and this is only checking if otherwise let's just say else destroy this game object because there's already an instance of this class and we don't need two in a given scene and that's it singleton created jump into unity hit play make sure you saved your class and now we can go to tank 2 without the bubbles resetting and there's only one audio manager in the scene you can see the other one was destroyed cool now with that being done i want my fish to have beautiful eating sound effects because it's quite lame and i want them to make a variety of sound effects i don't want just one same eating sound effect so each fish needs to play their own eating sound effects right so it would make sense to give each fish their own audio source component but i have a better way this way we can have less audio components in our game having better performance how much better i have no clue probably not that much what we'll do is go on the audio manager and create an empty child game object we'll rename this object to eat source or audio source and we'll add an audio source to this game object and now the audio manager needs a reference to this audio source so we'll go up here and create a serialized field and if you don't know what a serialized field is basically what it does is shows a public field here without actually letting other scripts have access to this variable and this will be an audio source named eat source we also need the audio clips for eating so we'll create a serialized field again and it'll be a list of audio clip and we'll call it eat clips plural it's going to be equal to a new list of audio clip now this right here is called initializing a list you can put a semicolon there but the list won't be initialized and you won't be able to use it on the get-go this is very common syntax you'll use it a million times now save your class jump into unity and now you can see that we have these fields so this eat source was intended for our child object we'll have a reference to its audio source we could just add another audio source to this game object hit ok now we have two but this quickly gets overwhelming and confusing so we're not going to do that children have names just like you so there you go and we'll put all these eclipse in here so the way we'll do that is we'll just lock the inspector and select all of these shift click and drop them all on the header ba bang and don't forget to unlock it now with all of those references we're going to create a public void and this function is going to be called eat sfx sound effects and it's public because i want my fish class let's jump onto it so my fish prefab game object has a fish class onto it and since it has a fish class we're just going to manipulate it like usual i want to call the eat sound effects and this function right here where we satisfy the hunger and we'll call it right here jump into our audio manager the first thing that we need to do is find out what audio clip out of all three of those eat clips are we going to use we're going to pick one at random so we're going to create an audio clip called clip and it's going to be equal to eat clips now usually you would do maybe zero for the first element or one for the second and so on and so forth because it starts at zero but what we're going to do is we're going to select a clip at a random dot range from zero to the last element on this list so we know we have three elements on this list right so we could just do two but what if you change the amount of eclipse you have so we'll solve this by going eat clips dot count and since this count function starts at one we'll just say minus one so that it works with the eclipse index which starts at zero close that off <laughs>
Now I actually made a mistake here. Make sure you remove minus one from eat source dot count because I forgot that random dot ranges max value is exclusive. So if you pass in three, it'll only go up to two and it won't play your last sound. So just make sure to remove minus one. Now we need to play this clip. To do that, we'll just say eat source dot play. What play does is it plays a clip start to end. And if it is interrupted in any way, say you play again or the audio clip is destroyed, it'll just stop playing that clip. But what if we have 50 fish at once eating? We can't only play one eat sound at once that's impossible and just to run down some basics you can play an audio source and we can go eat source dot stop so that it can stop playing and you can do many other things so we can go eat source dot loop and set looping equal to false or true we can mute it play on awake so that it plays at the start just showing you some options because we're not going to be using that in this video and i don't want you not to know those so like i said instead of play we'll use play one shot now this is quite amazing because this takes in a clip and a volume if you wanted but we're not going to use it this will take in a clip and once you play one shot no matter what you do that clip is going to play start to finish which is perfect because we might have 50 different fish eating and this one audio source will take care of all of those fish so we're going to play one shot this random clip it's really straightforward. I don't want to make it seem too complicated. And now with this function, nothing is actually calling it. So we jump into our fish class and right here, instead of saying eat sound effects, we'll say audio manager dot instance so we can do this because this is a public static it's static so that we don't need a reference to the audio manager we have this instance right here so we have audio manager dot instance and now we have access to this class so since this is public now we can go dot eat sound effects and with one line of code, you can call this function from anywhere. Save your script, jump into Unity, hit play. So now we have some hungry fish in here and we can go ahead and feed them. And it makes a variety of sounds. Awesome. Now you could definitely play with that a little bit. That sounded pretty bland. But just make sure that you apply the overrides on your audio manager so that all the audio managers and all the other tanks will have this eat source child object. That's it for this video, guys. That was the basics of audio in Unity. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe so that I can make more content just like this. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time.